Everyone claims note-taking is dead and AI tools will or have already taken over the tedious task of note-taking in today's corporate or educational world. I believe that's not true and that the craft of note-taking, reviewing and synthesizing has become more important than ever. So let me tell you why I believe that's the case and how you can become a master note-taker with minimal effort and the help of AI. Before looking at the simple strategies for effective note-taking, we need to understand that note-taking, in essence, has evolved rather than diminished over the last couple of years. It's not just about penning down words, it's about engaging deeply with them, turning random thoughts into something meaningful and bringing them into a broader context. Just imagine sitting through a lecture or a meeting where ideas flow like a river or where many people talk in confusion and maybe even where someone starts a new line of thought before the other has finished. It's super easy to get lost, right? And that's where note-taking comes into place. It's your lifeline. It's not about capturing every word, but grabbing the essence, summarizing in your own words what resonates with you. This act of summarizing forces you to engage actively, sift through the information and decide what's important. And there's beauty in simplicity. Keeping your notes concise means you're creating a clear, accessible path back to complex ideas. Of course, an AI tool that is often already built into some common virtual meeting tools, such as Microsoft Teams, could also summarize information. However, the AI does not know the context of information, cannot make connections to other meetings, or knows the actual reason the meeting and discussion have evolved. That's why note-taking will always be a craft that remains manual at least to a certain degree. Even though some tasks and the more mechanical parts can be outsourced to a machine, you, the human behind the keyboard, should incorporate intelligence and a personal spirit so the notes make sense in the end. AI cannot replicate the personal touch your notes carry. Your notes are a reflection of your thought process, your insights, your background knowledge, and your questions. They are uniquely yours, and that's where the true value lies. Of course, in today's professional world, you should know how to make the best use of tools that will facilitate your note-taking and take it to a whole new level. But before discussing the best tools and apps you might want to use, let's first clarify whether digital or analog note-taking is better. My take is that both worlds have their magic, but you need to choose the one that suits you best. So if you want to keep it simple, of course, you could use the most basic note-taking equipment, which is pen and paper. It's a great option if you want to keep your focus on the conversation or meeting because you might not be able to write as fast as it's going, so you need to focus on the most important keywords or bullet points. It's also a lot more friendly if you're not sitting behind a laptop screen in a one-to-one -one conversation. Further, it allows for a lot more freedom and personality, where you're able to doodle the margins and include some unique symbols, arrows or links across all the pages. On the other side, you can take notes digitally. Very basic, you could just open a new Word or text document and start typing. But the best way to take digital notes is by using a tool like Notion, OneNote, Xhiles or Evernote. The beauty is that all your notes will sync across your devices and you can easily share, copy or edit your notes without retyping them. But using such tools also means you have to use your laptop or phone, which might make you less present and engaged in meetings. You might even feel pressured to type each and every word, losing the conversation and not being able to ask questions, since you are too busy typing or formatting your notes. Even though I love pen and paper for doodling when in virtual meetings without video, I believe that the best practice for note-taking nowadays is using a digital tool like OneNote, Xhiles or Notion. In addition to the benefits I already mentioned, Notion for example has a built-in AI function that lets you summarize your notes, extract to-dos or take the next steps. If you have a Microsoft Copilot license, you can do similar things in OneNote or Word. Microsoft Teams and I assume other virtual meeting softwares as well have the ability to automatically generate meeting transcriptions that you might want to turn into your notes. 
Again, you might want to do that with Copilot. If you're looking for a free alternative, you could always use ChatGPT to help you improve your notes or extract certain information quickly. You might have heard me mentioning Xtiles a few times when listing some digital note-taking tools. Now wonder what Xtiles is? Well, it's a super versatile visual productivity tool that can transform your chaotic ideas into well-structured plans with a simple user-friendly interface that lets you customize almost everything. And I'm thankful for Xtiles to sponsor this video. Just imagine if Notion and Miro had a baby called Xtiles. It can not only help you with project management or note-taking, it can also help you with planning, which is how I have been using it lately, to better plan my days and have all my priorities at just a glance. So regardless if you're just using it on your own, for example, to track your self-improvement, if you're collaborating with others, or if you're taking visual notes, the great thing about Xtiles is that it enables you to be productive even on the go with the Xtiles. App. If you want to experience the power of Xtiles, check out the link in the description below. As a special treat, you can use the discount code to get 25% off your monthly purchase. Now that you have chosen to follow either manual or, hopefully, digital note-taking, let's explore some note-taking methods. There are numerous methods out there and each one has its own allure, designed to meet varied needs and styles. The real question isn't about which path is the best, because there's no best and no one-size-fits-all. But the question is which one resonates with you, aligning with your rhythm, your thought process and the way you interact with information. To answer this question, you need to do some self-reflection. Are you a visual thinker who thrives on colors and images? Or do you prefer structured linear information? Maybe a bit of both, seeking a flexible method that adapts to different contexts. Understanding your learning style is key. So it's about knowing how you absorb, process and recall information most effectively. This insight becomes your compass, guiding you through the myriad of note-taking methods. For instance, there's the famous Cornell method with its structured format of cues, notes and summaries, which is excellent for organizing information systematically. On the other hand, mind mapping is ideal for visual learners who prefer to see the connections between ideas. Other methods like the outline method or the charting method might suit different types of content or personal preferences. Having mentioned those four different methods only, remember that there are so many more out there that I cannot cover all in this video. So I can only underline that choosing the right method is a journey of experimentation. Allow yourself the freedom to try different approaches, even mixing elements from various methods to create something uniquely yours. Remember, the goal is to enhance your understanding and retention of information. It's about making the process of note-taking work for you, not the other way around. But regardless of the method you choose, consistency is crucial. That means that once you have found your preferred note-taking method, I recommend sticking to it across most of your notes. Consistently using the same method can help you streamline the process of taking notes and make it more automatic and less cumbersome. This doesn't mean you can't switch methods if you find one that doesn't work well for you, but giving a method enough time to see if it suits your style is important. Of course, there will always be specific meetings, such as project tour fixes or board meetings, that require dedicated meeting note formats, and that's okay. As long as you can cover the other 95% of your notes with your chosen format, format, everything's fine. Do you like the insights from today's video so far? Then you might also be ready to master your digital organization. Discover the Digital Architect, a comprehensive guide I've personally written, packing all my knowledge and experience into your ultimate toolkit for digital efficiency. This isn't about just organizing files. It's a complete overhaul of how you manage your digital life. From streamlined file management to best practices for handling your emails, calendar and your notes, this guide provides actionable tips that can transform your approach to digital organization. So if digital clutter has been holding you back, this guide is your solution. Dive into the digital architect and start reclaiming your time, energy and headspace today. Click the link in the description below to learn more and boost your productivity. So regardless of the method or structure you are using to take your notes, there are some universally applicable best practices in note-taking. First, you should always begin with a purpose. That means every set of notes should start with a clear intention. So what's your aim? 
understanding a concept, planning a project or gathering insights. This clarity guides your note taking, ensuring each note serves a deliberate purpose. Having this purpose in mind is critical because no AI or other tool can come up with this. Next, it's key to engage actively in your meetings for great notes. Again, a tool that automatically takes notes cannot ask clarifying questions, so that's your job. You need to transform note-taking from a passive activity to an active dialogue. Summarizing in your own words, question ideas and make connections. This active engagement breathes life into your notes. Today, it seems as if everyone is short on time and always busy. That's why often meetings are packed with information and lively discussions happen. In that case, it's crucial to focus on essentials and only capture the core of information. A concise summary in your own words often holds more value than pages of unfiltered details. In short, quality always trumps quantity. Another best practice for note-taking is organizing your notes to enhance clarity and facilitate recall. Use clear headlines, short bullets and highlights to segment information logically. A well-structured note is a map that leads you back to understanding when you need it. Trust me, I'll come back to this point later on. What also makes sense, especially when you are working on larger projects or on similar topics over weeks or years, is to link your notes. That means you should create connections between related ideas across different notes or sections. This can easily be done with any note-taking app, like OneNote, Notion or Obsidian. I myself, for example, take all my work-related notes in OneNote and link pages or sections wherever possible. So I end up having a network of knowledge, which makes it so much easier to navigate complex information or projects with just a click. Finally, make sure to review your notes and note-taking habits consistently. The act of note-taking extends beyond the initial creation of notes. Regularly review and refine your notes if required, especially in an educational environment such as college or on-the-job training. But what's even more important is to review your note-taking style, format or methods regularly. This helps you find the best strategy that resonates with your method of processing and interacting with information and eventually makes you more efficient over time. A crucial part of this ultimate note-taking guide is essential note-taking techniques. Now you might wonder how note-taking techniques differ from note-taking best practices. But that's quite simple, because best practices in note-taking outline general strategies for efficiency and effectiveness, while techniques offer concrete actions and methods to implement those strategies. In short, best practices are the bigger concepts within which you can employ different techniques. So the first note-taking technique you should practice is to summarize SMART. This technique is closely related to the best practice of only focusing on the essentials. And to do so, you need to be able to distill complex information into its core messages. You can do that by capturing key ideas in your own words, focusing on the essence rather than word by word notes. Especially when you're new to note taking, for example, as a freshman, intern or junior colleague in the corporate world, it might be difficult to capture just the essence. At least that's what I have experienced myself and seen over my career, where junior colleagues have always been taking the wordiest notes. That's why I can only encourage you to practice this craft and you'll quickly see improvements. One other technique to move away from just plain text is to use bullet points and lists. I love them and sometimes my notes are just a couple of bullets or key items listed. Just because they allow me to break down information into digestible, easy to scan items. No need to write lengthy paragraphs, but most of the time you can recall what has been said with a clear and understandable bullet point. Depending on the content or type of discussion, I also like to use visual mapping techniques such as mind maps or concept maps. Especially when it's a rather unstructured, maybe creative topic, such techniques might make sense to organize all the initial thoughts and map them along their main ideas and topics. I'm a visual learner, which is why this helps me in further working with all the mapped information. If you don't like such visuals, there's no need to embrace this technique. And a final technique you might want to try is to develop your own shorthand. This might sound a bit crazy at first, but I bet you have already done so. Develop 
keeping your own shorthand just means that you create a set of personalized abbreviations or symbols for common words, concepts, or categories relevant to your field or interests. For example, I'm using special symbols to indicate to-dos, next steps, or the fact that this is high priority or needs to be sent by an email to someone after the meeting. Considering everything that I have shared so far will certainly make you a better note taker. However, to be even more efficient, you should use templates and visual aids for your notes. Just like a map can guide you through unfamiliar terrain, templates provide a structured approach to capturing information, while visual aids help in making complex information more understandable and memorable. Even though it may sound very basic again to use templates, I often see people starting to jot down notes in a standard meeting on a blank page. So they spend the first few minutes in the meeting thinking about what to start with or where to put down which topics. On the contrary, I have a template for standard project meetings, one for more formal meetings like board meetings, then for brainstorming sessions and one for less formal team meetings. They all have dedicated places for attendees, action items with responsibilities, next steps or other things. And yes, it's an initial effort to create those templates, but please don't let this make you shy away. Since templates can be as simple as a set layout for headings and subheadings or as complex as a comprehensive framework for different types of meetings, lectures or research research notes. So having a well thought through layout will save you so much time later on as you won't need to reshuffle or reformat your notes for yourself or before sharing them with others. This not only save you time but also and maybe more importantly mental effort. Talking about saving time and effort there are a few final, maybe a bit more advanced strategies for effective note-taking. Even if you're already quite experienced with note-taking, I bet that there are still a few new interesting things for you. And they all evolve around the idea of leveraging technology and integrating your notes into your broader system of personal and professional productivity. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, note-taking is and will always remain a craft that goes beyond simple recording what's being said. So to transform your note from a simple record keeping task into a dynamic tool for learning, creativity and collaboration, you should use the features available in note-taking apps and software to enhance your note-taking process. First of all, that's cloud syncing. That may again sound very basic, but trust me, it is very often overlooked and I know a lot of people that have separate notes on each device. But having synced your notes across your laptop, iPad or phone ensures that they are always up to date and accessible from anywhere, anytime. This means you can start taking notes on your laptop during a meeting and then review them on your phone during your commute or just before an important client pitch in the elevator. In addition, you should make use of the ability to share notes. This is particularly useful for collaborative projects or study groups. You can pool knowledge and work together more efficiently by sharing your notes. Sharing your notes is, by the way, a super easy way to get feedback on your note-taking templates, styles and, of course, the content that you have been summarizing. To really maximize the potential of your notes, integrate them with other productivity tools. For example, link your notes to your calendar and keep track of deadlines and important dates or connect them with a task manager to turn your action items from meeting notes into to-dos. I guess most of you are working in one technical environment, such as with all Google tools or Microsoft 365. In that case, it's quite easy to link, for example, your notes from Microsoft OneNote with your tasks in Outlook or take notes in OneNote for selected calendar meetings that are in Outlook. And finally, make use of tags and advanced search functions to keep your notes well organized and easily retrievable. Tagging your notes with relevant keywords or topics allows you to filter and find related notes quickly. In addition, advanced search functionalities available in many note-taking apps enable you to search for specific terms, phrases, or even tags, making the process of locating information in your notes incredibly efficient. As you might have seen, the art of note taking depends on the one hand on best practices and techniques and on the other on the right tools and integrations. Maybe you have noticed that I have mentioned some essential OneNote tips in the video. So if you want to go one step further and become a OneNote power user, just as you are now a pro note taker, watch this video where I share the best OneNote productivity tips and tricks.